welcome to this episode of Trojan Poetry. Here we are. We're ready for a new tech set that I put together. It's not going to be as fun as the ones John puts together. I, I'm just going to say that ahead of time. That's my <laughs> that's my release file. But um, one of the fun things about doing this show, as I've said before uh, a couple episodes ago, is it kind of leads you down the rabbit hole to find out about new poets and yep. new writers that I never would have heard of mm -hmm. if we weren't doing a show like this and trying to find good mm -hmm. stuff. So. So that's kind of what this text set is going to be about. All right, so the first poem is by Kazim Ali, and it is called Yanis Ritsos, um, and we'll talk more about him in a second. So here we go, Yanis Ritsos by Kazim Ali. Athens was welcoming to those who had come from the sea. <clears throat> Mahmoud Darwish. Yanis, you held him in the glare of the diamonded sea, unteaching him his practical mantra of liberation, seeing in him a son to take care of you in your loneliness, Loneliness varnished by your detention, in the house made of flower stems that thrust through the rocks in the prison yard, its roof made of the unscannable lines of rain. You revealed to him the sound of the rusty hinged door, how it would swing sadly open and reveal no homeland beyond at all. He came from the sea, dragging his anklets of keys. Did you teach him then how the old locks and houses of his hometown were already all broken? Giannis, in the end, he rinsed the last of the coast road's dust from his body after a lifetime of pressing his language into lines of poetry and prayer and prestidigitation. That's a $10 word. Tired of praising mosques in which he could not pray. The same morning I was forbidden by the guard to pray at the mosque of Cordoba. He woke up in Houston, Texas, and went to a mall food court, went to a mall food court to meet for the first and last time his translator. The words they spoke to one another were the same as those I saw in stone fragments on the floor of the archaeological dig at Madinat Azara, the ruined capital of the West looking east toward the cities left behind. That city had remained buried in a field for a thousand years. The palace and throne room had been torn apart, the rubble of the mosaics now being painstakingly reassembled piece by piece, unlike the villages of Palestine, disassembled down to stone. Giannis, what did you say to him that blue afternoon when the stone canoe landed and he arrived in another place that would be home and not home? In Cordoba, meanwhile, the story of his death flashed across the morning news, scrolling along the screen from clay to nothing. But let's let the sea have the last word, the sea he crossed to come to you, or the one that sparkled off the coast of Chile, Chile when he, in Neruda's house, remembered you, or the sea that rained lightly down as the poet and his translator huddled together over cheap mall coffee to converse, in Texas of all places, though it could have been Athens, or Palestine, or Neruda's house, at least as good as any mosque in the world, so long as there was coffee and poetry in the sound of rain, rain in the shape of the river, rain in the shape of a broken lock, rain in the shape of long since written verses, while the translator of lost homelands makes from the sound of butterfly wings rain in the shape of the dark furnace of days. <laughs> All right, John likes it, I can yeah, tell. I, I feel in no way <laughs> up to this poem. <laughs> I thought I thought it'd be a little challenge. Yeah, it would be <laughs> yes. in order. You no, know? it's good. Good. Now, would you, so what would you like to do? Should we just launch into your first impressions, and then we can talk about the history of these guys <laughs> he's talking about, <laughs> or would it help to know a little bit more? Well, I, I think I mean part of what we're trying to do in these videos, right, is just kind of because I've never read this, I had no mm -hmm. idea what was coming. Is mm -hmm. just kind of show it's okay to be overwhelmed yes. and confused by a poem. And right, I still like, am. I've, I've yeah. read this multiple times now, and, right. I, and I still am picking it apart. Right, so I think there's value in just in saying there's so much going on here. Yes. Apparently there's background I don't know about. There's, you know, there's a lot of information. There's clearly what I picked up on was there's like the old versus the new. There's the East versus, not versus, but mm -hmm. juxtaposed with the West. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, nature. There's poetry. Um, there's other poets. And so... Kind of in the end, what I tell my students is to always look for the big butt in the poem. <laughs> look for the turn, or like the quote unquote turn in the poem, and sure enough, there it was on the on the ah. back side here. But let's let the sea have the last word. So then I was like, okay, that's an anchor, right? Like this okay. is there's a okay. turn here. There's the turn, and we're going to stop talking about all of this 
uh, stuff, maybe more historical, maybe more political, maybe more religious, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about nature. Mm -hmm. Right, and then that last stanza, rain in the shape of the river, rain in the shape, like in that, the, um, the anaphora, the repetition, mm -hmm. and the use of nature to maybe wash, because rain is you know, kind of traditionally maybe a symbol of washing things clean, mm -hmm. uh, starting over, or purifying. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was trying to do, right? I was trying to mark, okay, there's this he, I don't know who mm -hmm. the him and the him and the he and he's in prison mm -hmm. and then something about he's maybe in Texas with the translator so I'm like okay um, so that was my kind of first mm -hmm. attempt to make sense mm -hmm. right because I certain and I thought maybe it was about immigration at first because of the the um, quote at the beginning right um, so that was my yeah attempt right to make sense of it and when i first read it i was kind of in the same place i i, I just i just love the language i love some of the description mm -hmm. and it was so mysterious to me i wanted to know who is mahmoud darwish who is Yanis ritzos you know that yeah. he's that he's mentioning and i also i got a, a very strong with mentioning athens at the beginning and the stone canoe and this guy coming out of the ocean this odysseus or kind of old greek right. myth kind of a feel where he came from the sea dragging his anklets of keys to maybe set the other person free, right? He's arrived oh, and he's going okay. to help him, like you said, old versus new. Uh -huh. So the old poet or the, the guy in prison is going to give his wisdom to the new guy from the ocean who right. then will travel on and take it to other people. Right, so there's like, for me, there's like three la there are or more layers, right? There's Kazim Ali, the poet, talking mm -hmm. about Giannis, who's a poet, talking about somebody else, Right, so there's these three people whose relationship I'm not fully yeah. understanding, obviously on a first read, right. trying to make sense of it. Right. Um, so that is mysterious and kind of cool. And then we add Neruda, which kind of gets into this whole other mm -hmm. maybe political or just poetic thing about poetry. Yeah, and, um, and we go from Cordoba, which is in Spain, to Houston, Texas, and then to Palestine. Right. And, right. Um, so... When I read this, I really wanted to know, okay, who is Giannis Ritzos? Because as an American, I don't know who he is. I don't know Mahmoud Darwish. So I looked up Giannis Ritzos, and he was a Greek poet and activist, hmm. and he was part of the Greek resistance during World War II. And he was nominated for the Nobel Prize a couple of times, but never won it. Um, he had a, his early life sounds crazy. His, he, um, his, par or his parents went broke. His father and sister went insane. Hmm. His mother and older brother died of tuberculosis, and he was confined to a sanitarium for several hmm. years as a teenager. Um, and so his poetry really reflects that idea of struggle. We're going to look at one of his poems in a second. And hope versus despair and things like that. So that's Giannis Ritzos. Now, and he was exiled, it says. And he was exiled, yes. Right. And so he was thrown in jail. His Books poetry were burned. Yeah, yeah, wow. was, were burned. And so, I mean, he stood up against... Wow. The dictatorships that had taken over Greece in yeah. the early 20th century. Huh. Uh, Mahmoud Darwish is a famous Palestinian poet, and he's regarded as the Palestinian national poet. Um, he, uh, he he used Palestine. He was he he was in Palestine, but ended up in Houston, Texas. Okay. During the second part of his life, he lived in Israel and Egypt, and so a lot of his stuff is about home and feeling like you are you can never get home or home will never be the same, which is, I think, obviously him talking about Palestine mm -hmm. and the occupation of Palestine and things like that. So two very political writers. And if you apply, and then, oh, the last thing is the um, uh, Medina Azahara that he mentions is the ruins of a huge uh, Arab Muslim palace city built in the 900s in Cordoba, Spain. So Spain was ruled, uh, the southern half of Spain was ruled by Muslim <laughs> leaders for a good part of the Middle Ages. And so if you go to Cordoba in the south of Spain, you'll see this fortress. So once I looked all that up, I went back and looked <laughs> at the poem again and okay. I thought, okay, interesting because he has Giannis who is talking to him, which I think is Mahmoud Darwish, because okay. that's the guy who ends up in Houston, Texas. And then you have the author himself in Cordoba thinking about Darwish getting his stuff translated into English. And then he also sees, I think, Giannis's death uh, being flashed on a TV screen, right? In Cordoba, meanwhile, the story of his death flashed across the morning news, scrolling along the screen from clay to nothing. 
So it seems mm -hmm. to me he's imagining this meeting that took place, or maybe it did take place, between Giannis and Mahmoud, who are both these political writers, mm -hmm. all about trying to gain your freedom and protecting your, your home and things like that. And But it doesn't seem like any of them have a home. They're all over the place, you know? Right. I don't know if Kazim Ali was or visiting in, yeah, yeah, like in, in, in space, in yeah. physical space. Um, but, but knowing that Giannis was constantly in prison makes sense now because he's in the house made of flower stems that thrust through the rocks in the prison yard. Mm -hmm. And you have Mahmoud Darwish is maybe the one coming from the sea with the anklets of keys to set him free. He's a new generation mm -hmm. of poet. Okay. Um, you know, even though he's from Palestine, both of their politics seem similar. Um, the, the thing of Madinat Az Zara, I'd have to look up more about that place and why he chose that place. But he said, the west looking east toward the city left, cities left behind. It reminded me of Azimandias, the uh, mm -hmm. poem, you know, where, you've, you? yeah, where you've got Ramses II's statue half buried and nothing around remains, you know. So I, I just, I like this poem because it brought all these things together the imagery was awesome um i love the odyssey and the iliad and the old greek stuff so i love the imagery of this guy coming from the sea and trying to deliver mm -hmm. something to the other poet um what did you think john does that, does that yeah change your i think take that a little bit? that's interesting i i still i guess go back to the second or to the last three stanzas mm -hmm. where he said but let's let the sea have the last word right like okay mm -hmm. there's all this stuff going on and then that the, se the second to last stanza, the, the last line or the second last line, at least as good as any mosque in the world, so long as there was coffee and poetry and the sound of rain. Like, mm -hmm. okay, there's all of this stuff, right? There's all this political stuff, there's everything, but it's like there's, there's a refuge mm -hmm. in coffee and poetry and the sound of rain. Mm -hmm. And that can make even... Uh, a mall, a cheap mall in Texas, equal to a mosque, right? Any this, mosque in the world—it's a religious right. experience almost. Right. To, to go back to your writing, to the poetry, right. and to just have that simplicity, right? Because I, you I mean obviously, it, you know, you you fight for what you believe is right and everything, but that's mm -hmm. not a pleasant, happy, comfortable life. <laughs> not no. that everything should be, mm -hmm. but some respite right and then that repetition then the last rain 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 right and i um, thought the last line was really interesting because yeah. you have those opposites uh rain in the shape of the dark furnace of days yeah. so you have rain becoming a furnace you know which yeah. in the dark furnace of days it's like you know a crucible that maybe these two men pass through right. and the rain is going to wash it away or rain of tears from everything right. that they've been through yeah um, so I, I thought this was really interesting, and uh, so I thought, you know what? I'd like to read some poetry by Giannis Ritzos there you and go. Mahmoud Darwish. There's the spirit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> to see, as the American that I am, yeah. what they're all about. Now, the first one we'll do is Darwish, um, okay. and these are short and sweet, so we'll just kind of do a quick run through. All right, Mahmoud Darwish, The Horse Fell Off the Poem, translated by Fadi Judah. Who we did a poem by. Yeah, isn't that yeah. amazing? So I'll put isn't a that link amazing? Back. Yeah, yeah, isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. The horse fell off the poem, and the Galilean women were wet with butterflies and dew, dancing above chrysanthemum. The two absent ones, you and I, you and I are the two absent ones, a pair of white doves, chatting on the branches of a home oak. No love, but I love ancient love poems that guard the sick moon from smoke. I attack and retreat like the violin and quatrains. I get far from my time when I am near the topography of place. There is no margin in modern language left to celebrate what we love, because all that will be was. The horse fell bloodied with my poem, and I fell bloodied with the horse's blood. <laughs> wow. A light love poem. Again, for yeah. <laughs> Is that a love poem? Uh, I don't know. Well, I, I'm not sure. I, I was being sarcastic yeah, because no. he mentions love, but he <laughs> said, but the fact that he says uh, the two absent ones, yeah. and knowing Darwish's history, absent maybe, for, but he's in Galilee, which is in um, Palestine, right? But they're absent from what? What are they absent from? And then he says, no love. There's no love between right. the two of them. But he thinks about love poems. Um, he loves ancient love poems. Right, right. All that will be was. 
Um, it's almost like he, he, the past, everything is in the past and he can't even envision a future. Right. And that last stanza that's so brutal, right? The horse fell bloodied on my poem and I fell bloodied. So, yeah, I get far from my time when I am near the topography of place. Mm -hmm. Like, but that's too weird. Like, I get far from, like, I am now, but when he gets close to something, he gets further away from now. Like, he's right. drawn well, he's back. He's about or, the past. Like, he's sitting in Galilee right, and right. he's thinking about the history of that place mm -hmm. and the history of Palestine. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the title <laughs> in the first line. Yeah. The horse fell off the poem. Um, because it doesn't seem like there's a horse physically mm -hmm. where he is. Um, I don't know, a horse is a way to get around. It's a method of transportation. So yeah. he's thinking of maybe being able to, to ride. You know, and again, that, that, again, that's an ancient way to get around yeah. was by horseback. Um, but just some really cryptic interesting descriptions here um i attack and retreat like the violin and quatrains um there's no margin in modern language left to celebrate what yeah we that's love. so sad right i know like, it's like a, he it's almost like a be. hopeless resigned feeling you know that everything good has already passed in order to get there i have to live in the past and and he says he attacks and retreats so it's yeah. like he's talking, this person that he's talking to, it's like a battle, you know? He mentions love, there's no love between them, and so he treats it like a battle. He's attacking and retreating in this conversation with this person. But they are compared to a pair of white doves chatting on the branches of a home. Like, so it's not Which that they... Peace. I don't know if they yeah. don't... If they, if they hate each other. No, no. But the relationship is not one of love? Like, right. And white doves means peace, and you know maybe he's talking to an Israeli. He's a Palestinian, mm -hmm. you know, given the conflict over there, or someone that he wouldn't talk to otherwise. Um, so very mysterious, yeah, wow. very interesting stuff. I'm definitely going to look up some more of Darwish. And right. he was writing like, so he was born in 1941. Mm -hmm. So this was probably in the 60s, mm -hmm. right? Like he, mm -hmm. if we wait 20 years, right, <laughs> right, right. To, so he can become a poet. Um, and there was a lot going on in the 60s yeah. with the, uh, what is it, the Six Days War between mm -hmm. um, some of the Arab countries in Israel. Your history is better than mine, Mike. <laughs> but yes, that was a very, very dark, violent time there. Wow. Um, okay, yeah. so that's Darwish. So we'll move along and let's look at Yanis Ritsos, who is the other poet being mentioned. Uh, and he was the Greek poet uh, from the middle of the century, around World War II. Okay, so here we go. Yanis Ritsos, Absence. This was published in the August-September 1970 issue of Poetry Magazine. In our hands we hold the shadow of our hands. The night is kind. The others do not see us holding our shadow. We reinforce the night. We watch ourselves. So we think better of others. The sea still seeks your eyes, and we are not there. A young girl buttons up her love in her breast, and we look away smiling at the great distance. Perhaps high up in the starlight, a skylight opens up, that looks out on the sea, the olive trees, and the burnt houses. We listen to the butterfly gyrating in the glass of All Souls Day, and the fisherman's daughter grinding serenity in her coffee grinder. Again, we'll let, the, we'll let the one settle. <laughs> quite a bit. What the show is all about. To try to think about what is going on. Um, yeah. The lines that stood out to me that link him to the Darwish poem were in the middle. A young girl buttons up her love in her breast and we look away smiling at the great distance. It reminds me of those um, Hopper paintings mm. that we've looked at. There's oh, two yeah. people there, but they can't connect. Mm -hmm. For some reason, you have to hold your, your feelings inside and they're smiling almost in a fake way and they're looking off. It sounds like it could be a really romantic place where yeah. they are, but yet it's not. Well, and then after that, the, the attempt to make it even more romantic, mm -hmm. perhaps high up in the starlight, a skylight opens up that looks out on the sea, mm -hmm. the olive trees and the burnt houses, right? Like, maybe there's something up there looking down mm -hmm. or perhaps, lighting up, right? right, lighting things up. Almost like he wishes that it were that way. And oh, but then the, I mean, like the butterfly gyrating in the glass of All Souls Day, like that doesn't sound... It wasn't sound, at all, <laughs> right? Like, that <laughs> sounds painful. Right, in the glass of All Souls Day. So there, maybe the, he's sitting, is it literally a, a cup of coffee or a glass that's mm -hmm. sitting on the table? 
And well, you put would... butterflies under glass, right? Like you pin yeah. them. Right. Like, right. And so the, oh. So the glass of all souls Maybe day literally, yeah, is holding the butterfly. And then all of a sudden we get to that last line and the fisherman's daughter grinding serenity. Grinding though. In her coffee grinder. So she's, she's forcing it into existence. That's right. That's a, a great, you know, juxtaposition there of grinding and serenity. I would right. never think to say... When we get the coffee again, though, right? Mm -hmm. Like, didn't we have coffee mm -hmm. in, yes, in the first Kazim poem. Ali's poem, yes. right? About how great coffee was. Right. And as and long as you had coffee... Everything is okay. And then here's the ah, coffee. interesting. And he mentions the sea. Did right? you do that and on purpose? purpose? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, John. <laughs> You're like a poet. You'll never know your true intention. <laughs> Maybe there are other Giannis Rizzo's poems, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, but I, I liked the, the link because what I thought was really cool is obviously Kazim Ali has a lot of respect for yeah. Ritzos and Darwish to the, to the point where he went to their poems, went to their stuff, mm -hmm. and then mirrored that in his own poem. And um, I just love learning about poets from around the world who've been translated yeah. that we might never know otherwise. Yeah. So. And what is the absence? Just a yeah, lots, lots right. of questions. I don't yes. think we've we've exhausted. What is, the, what is in in our hands? We hold the shadow of our hands. Yeah. The others do not see us holding our shadow. And so it's almost like they were holding hands, but they're not. So there's like a shadow of yes, it's maybe not real. each other's the hands. The relationship isn't real, right. or, or it's not how it should be. We watch ourselves, so we think better of others. Mm -hmm. like, the sea seeks our eyes. It seems like it's almost backwards, and we are not there. So yeah, the absence. Mm. Yeah, what's a lot to think about? What do they have to, <laughs> we'll think about that before the next episode. But all right, thanks for watching. Join the conversation on Twitter at Trojan Poetry DGN and check out our website, trojanpoetrydgn.blogspot.com.